This is Dr. Stewart of Timonium Foot and Ankle Center, and we're going to talk about bunions and Taylor's bunions. Ooh, that word bunions, it just sounds harsh and rough. Whenever people say bunions, they always think of their grandmother or their grandfather or this big nasty thing on a foot. But a bunion is actually quite simple and they're very common. Um, before we learn about bunions, we need to understand the anatomy of the foot. So I'm going to actually show everybody this x-ray, and this x-ray is of a foot, a foot that actually has both a bunion and a tailor's bunion. And you can see here there are five metatarsal bones, one, two, three, four, five, and the metatarsals connect with the toes. The toes are up here. The toes are called the phalanges. And a true bunion, also known as hallux valgus, is when the bone, your first metatarsal bone, is prominent or protrudes on the on the inside of the foot. A tailor's bunion is where the fifth metatarsal protrudes on the outside of the foot. And these are called tailor's bunion because tailors sit cross-legged and the side of their foot is leaned upon and this creates irritation. If you look at this bunion, you can actually see there's a little space narrowing of the joint. The joint space is a little narrowed as opposed to here, you see a nice dark spot, whereas here there's a little narrowing. And we're gonna also show another picture, a, a clinical picture of a bunion, where we have a patient with a, a pronounced bunion deformity. And you can see this protrusion, you can see this redness over the bone. And this is generally where patients will develop pain. They get pain because there's a nerve that runs right there, that's called the uh, dorsal mediocutaneous nerve. And that nerve runs here. And we get what I would call a sandwich effect where if my hand right here is the shoe and the bone is uh, here, both the bone and the shoe are a piece of bread and that nerve is a piece of meat and it just gets impinged. And a lot of times people will get shooting pain running up through their toe. They'll get uh, numbness in their toe. They'll get pain around their joint. Sometimes this redness can, can become very protruded and people can collect fluid around here, develop a bursa. Uh, you may have here bursas that can occur around the Achilles tendon. They can occur uh, around your elbow. There are multiple areas where people can get a bursa and a bursa is a fluid, fil fluid filled sac. And that just causes a lot of pain and inflammation. So where do bunions come from? Where do you get them? Well, they're, they're congenital. They come from your parents or your grandparents or someone in your family. Uh, sometimes you'll see patients that no one in their family has a bunion and they develop a bunion. But bunions are a common finding that we see. And just because you have a bunion doesn't mean that it's going to be painful. Uh, we'll get patients that come in all the time and say, I have this bunion and I don't like the way it looks. Can it be removed? Well, my answer is it can be removed, but we're not going to remove it unless it hurt because you don't want to start doing foot surgery unnecessarily. You only want to operate on things that hurt because the consequence of operating on something that doesn't hurt could result in potential pain that was not there before the operation. So what are the signs and symptoms of a bunion? Well, you will see it. You can visually see a bunion or a tailor's bunion. The bones are sticking out on the side of the, of the foot. Uh, you'll get some redness, irritation, like I said, throbbing, swelling, burning. Sometimes you can get joint pain and achiness, joint stiffness, and they really can be exacerbated or aggravated with barefoot walking. Barefoot walking can promote some biomechanical changes that can advance the bunion deformity. So it's important that you wear good supportive shoe gears. A lot of times you wear orthotics in your shoes to give proper support. Um, you want to avoid activities that aggravate the bunions or Taylor's bunions, which would be avoiding uh, impact activity, running, jogging, elliptical machines. Uh, you want to keep impact lower so that you don't stress these joints, uh, biking, swimming, seated weight training. Uh, additional care for bunions would be real. The care for bunions really would be making sure that you're wearing shoes that are deep and wide that accommodate your foot. As stated earlier, wearing orthotics that give the proper support and eliminate some of the biomechanical forces that can really contribute to the bunion or Taylor's bunion worsening over time. Icing, elevating, occasionally we'll put steroids in there in the event that someone just can't have, uh, can't tolerate the pain and they're not in the uh, uh, right time frame to have an operation. And if bunions get real bad, we'll operate on them. Now, the criteria for bunion surgery should be, number one, that you fail conservative care, and number two, that you're having pain that's really limiting you. Um, we don't do bunion surgery so uh, someone can wear tight shoes, nice pointy shoes, 
Um, and know that shoes don't actually cause bunions, they aggravate the bunions. So, you know, frequently get people coming in here and saying, I swear it started when I started wearing a pointed shoe. Well, guess what? Your foot was already wide and that shoe is narrow and you were trying to uh, fit something into a space that just is not gonna work. If you can't wear shoes at all and you're cutting holes in your shoes, that's not a good thing because you're now exposing your feet to the elements. If it's cold out, uh, if you step on something, you can injure yourself otherwise. So if bunions get real bad, the last resort is surgical, but it's always important to exhaust conservative care. So I don't like recommending surgery or I will not recommend surgery unless someone has failed conservative care. I had a young lady come in not too long ago who actually had a really bad bunion and she'd done some conservative care with the exception of wearing orthotics. And she was going on a hiking trip out west and she actually said to me, can we can we pencil surgery in? I really, I'm, I'm miserable with this thing and it's not getting better and I've worn wider shoes and I've iced my foot and I've used Tylenol and Advil and I continue to have pain. And I suggested that she try custom foot orthotics first and we did that and she came back to see me a couple of months after her trip and it was about a month before we were talking about doing surgery and we took her pencil and we erased her off the schedule because her pain went away. She she indicated that her bunion pain went away with just simply wearing uh, custom foot orthotics and I can repeat that story many times over. That does not mean that everybody's going to get better with that. There are definitely patients that we do bunion surgery on. Bunions are a common surgical problem. But the point is, you really need to exhaust conservative care and understand that conservative care can work. Uh, when we do surgery for bunions, it really depends on how bad the deformity is. We're gonna come back to the screen for a second, and I'm gonna go back to that uh, patient x-ray that we had before of the bunion, and you can see that this is what the bunion looked like before. And in this case, we cut the bone and we moved it over. We actually did some other procedures but we really created a uh, new alignment of the joint and we were able to fix this bunion. And you can see this is the same patient's foot where their bone is nice and realigned. And we put a screw in there and their space is nice and recreated. And you can see where the arrow is, that big bony prominence is gone. And if you look at these side by side, you can appreciate that the uh, bunion deformity is better. So this patient is, is uh, wearing shoes, uh, doing really well, uh, no pain, uh, the pain is completely gone. Now, this is an example of a bone where we cut in, in what we call the head of the bone. Sometimes we'll cut the bone in the base of the bone. It really is dictated upon how bad the deformity is. Now, you know, the last thing I wanna talk about is, you know, the pain associated with bunion surgery and Taylor's bunion surgery. Everybody comes in here and they say, I heard it's a nightmare, it's a horrible experience, you know, it's miserable. The truth of the matter is any surgery uh, can be painful and any surgery can be minimally painful. And it really is patient dependent. And I would encourage patients not to let uh, the post-operative pain uh, scare you. Uh, that's, that, that's not a reason not to do surgery. A reason not to do surgery is uh, if you can't do the recovery the right way. Because the truth of the matter is most patients are on narcotics for very few days after surgery. Most of my patients are off narcotics within a few days. We use peripheral nerve blocks, which give long lasting anesthesia to minimize the need for uh, uh, narcotic use. We're very well of uh, minimizing narcotics uh, and we really like to focus on that. And uh, the most important thing is just doing the recovery the right way if you get to the point where you need bunion surgery. If you have a bunion or a Taylor's bunion, or you would just like more information or like to learn about bunions, feel free to read the information on this site. And if you'd like to come in for a consultation to learn more about your bunion or Taylor's bunion, please fill out the form below or give the office a call and we'll be happy to give you some help.